Let's talk about money. Currently, the United States is in their own struggle with the debt ceiling, which may or may not get figured out and likely won't matter because at this point in our time, in this point in history, we are trillions upon trillions of dollars in debt. That being said, this video is mostly geared towards the everyday American, the blue collar, white collar, whatever you do to make your money, to live and to be a family or however you spend your life, this is for you because we are in trouble as a nation, but we're also in trouble as a people of the nation. And let me tell you why. I just read this article. It was published in January of 23, so just a few months ago. And it stated that 74% of American families, they do not have any savings. They are living from paycheck to paycheck. They are in a struggle and one bad thing can happen, boom, they're done. Then it says 67% of Americans have less than $400 in their emergency savings account. This could be for any number of things, a medical bill, a vehicle issue, childcare, whatever. This is a little bit of a clickbait article because once you read down the respondents that they surveyed was only about 1100 people but let's just assume that that is pretty close to accurate across the board if you take into account the 330 million americans so what can you do well you need to start saving your pennies it doesn't matter how you do it you just need to start you need to start today because if you couldn't start yesterday, today is the next best time. And that doesn't mean that you need to save, you know, half of your paycheck, especially if you are living paycheck to paycheck. But if you're having fun on the weekends, drinking and smoking and going out or driving through that drive through for dinner, those little bits of money, they add up and they will add up very, very easily if you just start a budget. You have to take everything into consideration when you're putting that together. Be methodical and write down every single expense that you have during the month, whether they're big bills like rent or the mortgage or little bills like gas, although that's not so little these days. Then write down what you're actually taking home, your net, not your gross. That way you'll get to see what you can truly spend, what you can truly save, and how to move forward. As you're going down your debt journey and finding out where your money is actually going, what are you spending it on, can you put anything aside, you will start to realize that there are definitely things along the way that would make more sense for you to budget better. One of my most annoying examples of this are car loans. The interest rates are insane on car loans, much like houses these days. And I get it, they are expensive, but there is a huge difference between a $15,000 car loan and a $25,000 car loan, almost $200 per month. That's almost $2,400 per year, just in car payments. That's not including your gas, that's not including your insurance or your car washes or anything else that you could add in there as well. How about making a menu for your week so that you can grocery shop one day a week or maybe once every two weeks, writing down your menu, meal prepping, planning, getting all of that in order so that you don't have to worry about it. That's number one. And number two is you know exactly how much you're spending on each meal each day and potentially for each person in your household. The other thing that you could be thinking about is like your fun money. Do you go out to the movies? Do you go out to the bars? Do you go out to lunch every couple of days with your girlfriends or do you meet up and get your nails done? Whatever it is that is your fun factor, take that into consideration. And I'm not saying that don't do it anymore because everyone loves that little pampering here and there. But when you're spending $60 a week on going out and doing silly things and you could be saving that, it really does add up. 
The other thing that I have to mention, which some people love and some people hate, is the latte factor. Do you go to coffee stands once a day or every other day and spend five to ten dollars on your coffee when you could go to Costco and buy a big tub for eleven dollars and have coffee for a month? I mean, that is a really big difference. And I love myself some espresso shakes from the Beanstalk, but I know that when I go there, I'm spending a minimum $6 with the tip, and that's just on a little 12-ounce drink. Gas is extremely expensive these days, and if you got into a little swing of things during the pandemic where you could work from home, maybe see if you can still take advantage of that one or two days a week. Because right then and there, you're saving money on gas by driving less miles, therefore putting less miles on your rig in between oil changes and maintenance issues. It really will add up. Okay, my last little bit of the soapbox issue that I'm on is going to deal with things that you can control in a way. And that means... Does your job offer you a 401k or an IRA, something to stash your money in with the ability to take the burden off of your taxes for the year? If you're self-employed, you could have a variety of things, but if you work a W-2 job, you likely have one of those scenarios where you have a 401k or you have an IRA and use it, use it to the fullest extent, the fullest capacity that you possibly can, especially, especially if your employer matches you. It's like getting free money. And let's talk about taxes because who likes to pay taxes, especially with the government that we have right now? They can't balance a budget. You have to do that for yourself and for them. But let's just take that into consideration. If you click on head of household, you get a lower lower taxable rate and a higher potential refund at the end of the year. But in my eyes, and this is just my opinion, I do not want to give the government any more money ahead of time than I have to. And I am a self-employed person. I do not pay my quarterly taxes. I will gladly take a fee for that because I would rather keep my money with me all year long and then pay my taxes later on. If you're a W-2 person and you're getting a ton of taxes taken out of your paycheck with the hope that you're going to get that back as a tax refund, that is certainly just a hope. You don't know for sure. And why would you put your faith in the U.S. government? You likely wouldn't. You need to talk to an accountant, of course, someone who is going to be a financial advisor for you, someone who's going to make sure that you're doing the right thing, but that is another way to stash some money. Instead of giving all of it away to the government initially, take more of it in the beginning during your paychecks during the year, and then you can stash that money You'll still maybe have to pay taxes, but you'll have a savings account available because you already stashed that money. My bonus tip is this. You can only save so much money, especially if you're not making a lot of money. So instead of completely worrying about that side of things, maybe also jump into the side gig business. There are a ton of opportunities out there. They're waiting for you to take advantage of them, and then you can use that money as your stash or your fun money.